All right, today I'm joined by Micah Downs. Micah, thank you so much for joining me and my viewers on my channel. Yeah, no problem, man. Happy to be here. Yep, thank you so much. Uh, you know, this is round two for us. We tried yesterday on the train and had a little bit of technical dip difficulties, so I'm hoping that this one will, will go a little bit better. Um, you know, just to bounce off of what we talked about yesterday, let's go back to your high school career and how that kind of springboarded your recruiting with both AAU and your high school season into being a McDonald's All-American and how that landed you some of your offers and opportunities. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me was the AAU circuit. Um, you know, when I moved back to the Seattle area um, and I was playing in different stuff, uh, spring ball and stuff and summer stuff. and um, Friends of Hoop, Ron Bollinger and uh, and Jim Marsh noticed me, and they asked me to play for them with Friends of Hoop, and um, I played for them summer going into my junior year and summer going into my senior year. Uh, when I decided to go to Basel, you know, I had a really good season. Um, I was one of the best players in the state. I started getting a lot of letters from you know all types of schools, stuff like that. My first letter actually came in ninth grade uh, from um, Bobby Knight when he was coaching at Texas Tech. Um, I went to uh, to a camp. It was called Future Stars of America Camp. It was like eighth grade going into my ninth grade year, and I was playing with like all older guys. You know what I mean? Like sophomores and juniors and stuff in high school, and I played really well. And then came back, started ninth grade, and, and got you know got a letter from Coach Knight. And then you know once I got back to the Seattle area and then started playing AU and stuff like that. And at Bothell, I really started just getting handfuls and handfuls of letter every day. You know, so it was it was really cool. It was a blessing and everything. You know, every kid that plays ball and has a dream of you know playing college or whatever dreams of having coaches and schools like so prestigious, you know, send them these types of letters every day. So it was really cool. Of course. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. And so at that age, you know, 15, 16, like, how overwhelming was that for you? Uh, man, at first it was really overwhelming, you know, because, like I said, it's just a dream. You know, as a kid, you never really know if that's going to happen or not. Um, and once it starts happening and those letters start piling in and the calls are coming and, you know, coaches are coming to watch you play games and stuff like that, it's, it was really cool, man. Really cool, really cool experience. Did you have anybody helping you with that? Was it like an AAU coach, a high school coach, parents? Uh, like as far as my decision and all that? Well, just kind of filtering through schools, handling the attention, your decision, everything. I mean, yeah, I had some of my really good friends at school were obviously in my ear and thought it was really cool that I was getting some letters from certain schools. Like I was getting letters from Georgetown. And at that time, if you remember, they really didn't, have uh, white players on their team or really recruit white players um, and so you know that was cool that I was starting to get letters from Georgetown even you know what I mean and and, and a lot of my friends you know they thought that was cool they, they 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 thought it was cool to go with me to pick up my letters and stuff from the coaches the coaches uh, office and all that um, you know so my all my friends showed me a lot of love but as far as like Choosing and, and going through filtering through these schools like that, you know, my coaches, Ron Bollinger, um, and then my senior year, Zeke Bambolo, um, you know, they, they really helped me with, with a lot of stuff. My parents were right there helping me choose. You know, they were, my dad had a big influence on me going to Kansas. Um, you know, that was his favorite school his whole, his whole life, you know, as a, as a college hoops fan. So. so that played a big decision in, in choosing Kansas? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I, I grew up watching Kansas, and my dad always had Kansas gear, T-shirts, and stuff like that. Um, you know, so we we was always rock chalk Jayhawk. Um, and then went on my visit, and and it, then it was over. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. what um, like, at what time frame did you make your decision? Was it early? Was it late? Did you hang on and and go as long as you can? Uh, no, man, I I committed in the first like available commitment period. Um, like right when it was available for me to commit, I committed right on my first visit. I went to one visit to Kansas and made my commitment there. Mm -hmm. Now, did that take any stress off your plate yeah. for you know playing, finishing out the rest of your high school career, or was it still kind of an overwhelming process because you had you know the Jordan game, McDonald's, all that stuff? 
I mean, no, I definitely after after you know committing and then signing my letter of intent right before my senior year, I also signed my letter of intent the first available signing period uh, right before my senior year started. So, you know, I could kind of just play stress free my senior year. I knew where I was going. Um, I didn't have to entertain all this these options anymore. You know, all these calls and letters and like you know what I mean, stuff like that every single day. So yeah, definitely made it a little bit easier, a little bit stress free. Yeah, I'm sure. So then, you know, going into your freshman season, uh, how different is it going from high school basketball, even competing against some of the best players, to now being on that big stage at the college when you're playing with with grown men? Oh man, it was it was a huge transition, uh, especially physically. You know what I mean? Because um, when I was young, I was allergic to the weight room, man. I hated I hated <laughs> lifting weights. I just, you know what I mean? I just I hated it, and now. I love lifting weights. I love the physicality and that aspect of the game and and everything like that. But coming out of high school, I was like six, eight, one hundred and eighty pounds, something like that. And I was, you know, I was real thin, super skinny. So um, the physicality of of the game. Sorry, I'm gonna close the window. It's kind of loud. The physicality of the game was probably the the uh, the biggest thing, the biggest transition for me. I think. Sorry about that. No, no problem, no problem. So then, you know, going from you spent one one season at Kansas, correct? Just your freshman year? No, nah, bro. I spent fresh. I spent my uh, just the first semester. I, I transferred halfway through the the, the year. Okay, okay. So then, going yeah. to Gonzaga, like when your when your recruitment reopened, did you have a lot of options? Did you know exactly what you wanted to do? What played into that decision? Yeah, I pretty much knew exactly what I wanted to do. You know, um, I was going through some family stuff and some really personal issues and everything like that. And you know, I felt I needed to get closer back to home. So that that's what helped with me, with me going back to Gonzaga. You know, transferring there. Okay, so what was the difference in like the coaching style from going from Bill Self to Mark Few? Oh man, it's a big difference. Uh, Coach Self is really, really hard. He's a really hard coach, you know what I mean? Like, and there's just, I wasn't able to handle his intensity and how tough he was, you know, at that at that age and uh, at that point in time and the stuff that I was dealing with. You know, the big picture and everything, I wasn't able to deal with his intensity. Coach Few is intense for sure, but he, he's, he's different. He's not the same. He's not going to really get in your face and scream at you as, as much as, you know, coach self, that's kind of the way he, he, he motivates, you know what I mean, by kind of yelling a little bit. Um, and coach Fee's not quite that way. He's a little bit more on the on the mellow side. So um, I was I was really able to fit in really well and, and really gel with him as my coach. Now, you, you were part of that first Gonzaga group that kind of put them on the map as far as, you know, being a national powerhouse. To explain kind of how, how that played out through the rest of your career when up until graduating from Gonzaga. Oh, man, it was fun. You know, we made the tournament every year. Um, we went to the Sweet 16 my senior year, played against North Carolina in the Sweet 16, and got our asses kicked. But, you know, they're the ones that go on to be the national champions this, that year, so it's, it's not, that, not that bitter of a taste to lose to the national champions. Um, you know, just going through my whole career, improving as a player, um, and then winning conference tournament MVP my senior year, like that was a really emotional thing for me just because of a lot of stuff that I had been through, through, through at Gonzaga, you know what I mean, how my relationships and everything developed with the university and with the coaches and, and all the staff, you know what I mean, it just, it, it was really a cool way for me to end my career, you know, going to the Sweet 16 for one, but, you know, being conference tournament MVP, playing really, really well, you know what I mean? Um, so the development as far as that goes was definitely lifelong memory. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's a credit mm -hmm. to you of how, how much work you put in and how much you improved along the way. Yeah. And we had some, man, we had some really good players on those teams, man. You know, Derek Bravio, Matt Bolden, Pargo, Austin Day, Ira Brown, Robert Sackery, Stephen Gray, you know what I mean? We had some guys that could really play. And now you look at, you know, you look at what Gonzaga's doing, you know, making a Final Four, National Championship games, like building brand new practice facilities, like, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yep, yeah, you were part of that group that put them on the map. 
So, you know, with, with how you finished your senior year, obviously that helped springboard you into your professional career. What, what type of opportunities did that bring? Oh, man, it brought the opportunities of, you know, potentially making to the NBA. I got to go to uh, a Portsmouth Invitational. Um, it's a tournament on Portsmouth, Virginia for seniors. Uh, I got to do a handful of NBA workouts, you know what I mean? I got to meet guys like Larry Bird, you know what I mean? Danny Ainge, Doc Rivers, you know, some really big you know, Steve Kerr got to sit down and have lunches and things like that with these guys, you know what I mean? So just open opportunities to meet, you know, some of my childhood heroes and people that I grew up watching play, you know what I'm saying? So that alone, even though I didn't have an NBA career, that alone, man, it, you know, it put me in that world to where I could spend time with people that I never, ever dreamed of, you know? So that was really cool too, man. So how did that first year play out for you? Right after college, you were doing some NBA workouts, uh, and then, and then, what what type of where did you end up signing eventually? Uh, I ended up signing in Croatia, playing in uh, Zadar in the Adriatic League. Um, but you know, I had some really good workouts. You know, we talked about this yesterday. I had some really good workouts and some really bad workouts. Um, for example, my one of my worst workouts was with the Rockets against uh, Patrick Beverly. <laughs> You know, I just, I couldn't do anything. He was in my, right in my shorts the whole time, you know what I mean? Just, and you see, you see why he has an NBA career. Um, so, you know, and then I, I had great workouts, for example, with, with the Phoenix Suns against James Johnson, Austin Day, Chase Budinger, um, Lee Kamard. Mm, there might have been one or two other guys I can't remember, but, you know, I had a really great workout. And after that workout, you know, met with Steve Kerr and uh, David Griffin. Um, and, you know, they told me, go overseas, play a year. When you come back, you'll have a deal. Um, and I came back about like a week or two in. Steve Kerr resigned the, as the general manager and decided to go back to TNT. And so I kind of, you know, I lost that opportunity right there. So, but, you know, I kept playing. Um, Went to uh, second division Spain the following year, so had a really great year, and then went to the ACB the year after that. So, you know, even though I didn't have an NBA career, like I said, playing in those workouts and just making those connections has definitely helped in my career and prolonged my career, I think. Yeah, and it also helped give, you know, there were some times where you, you had, you were very close to the NBA in, in many different positions in your career, and I think that going overseas and doing so well had definitely helped you with that. Mm -hmm. um, now, so how, you know, going from playing at a U.S. college, having some workouts in the NBA, and then going overseas, like what's the different, the biggest differences from, you know, basketball in Europe internationally to basketball back in the States? Well, the biggest difference, obviously, I think is the athleticism, you know what I mean, and the speed of the game. Uh, but at the same time, guys over here are catching up, you know what I mean? They're starting to learn how to work on their games individually and stuff like that. I think that's one thing that sets apart um, us as American players and, and a lot of European players and, and, and the way basketball is played in America and where it's played in Europe is we, we do individual workouts, you know, all through the summertime. We don't really take summers off. And some guys over here take all the whole summers off, you know what I mean, and just chill and live a regular life. You know, we're in the gym, but, you know, guys are, I'm seeing it definitely, guys are over here starting to pick up on that, playing one-on-ones, you know what I mean, playing pick-up all in the summertime, getting your individual skill work in, so, uh, but, yeah, like I said, the biggest difference is probably the speed and athleticism um, from America to Europe, in my opinion. For sure, so, now, what year is this for you? You're on year what now? This one was just finished up year 11. Year eleven. Wow, that's been a long and fruitful career with many many years left. So, uh, you know, how many countries have you played in, and and if you can name all of them? Oh man, I played Croatia, Belgium, Spain, uh, Venezuela, Italy, France, Russia, Ukraine, Portugal, and two stints in the D League in in Portland with the Red with the Red Claws where we met. Um, and then uh, one one stint with the Erie Bayhawks. And what what was the difference between the Bayhawks program? Obviously, I was with you with the Red Claws, but but what was the difference there? I mean, I don't want to speak bad about the uh, the Erie Bayhawks or any program that I play for. You know what I mean? But the biggest difference, to be honest, is 
the Red Claws are a really professional organization that's in the D League. You know, they're always right there in the playoffs. They're always got guys getting call ups. You know what I mean? And that's an, that's a testament to the Boston Celtics is, itself. You know what I mean? There's a reason why Boston's such a good team almost every year, and you know they have had such legendary players or players and such success is because they run their club in a certain way. And it, it's really cool and, and cool to see the their D League team do the same thing. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, I can vouch for that. Mm-hmm. It was ran very professionally. And Mike Taylor, the head coach at the time, he was he was really steering the ship well. And there yeah. was also some great players around you. Absolutely, that was a fun year. Shelby Mack, Chris Wright, you know, Chris Joseph was up and down with us. Scott Mello, rest in peace. Um, so then, what you know, we talked a little bit about this yesterday. What was what has been your favorite, like either city or country that you've been in, and what was the favorite league that you played in? Um, my, my favorite league, I think, has been the VTB league. Uh, I think it's really, really strong league. It's tough. It's physical. Really big players. You know what I mean? Like the bigs are really big, strong dudes. <clears throat> favorite, either that or the ACB. You know, they're 1A and 1B, in my opinion. Either way, you want to put them in order. Um, favorite city? I really like Lisbon a lot. Lisbon's amazing, man. You know, uh, I also lived in Orleans, France, which is just about an hour from Paris. That was cool. I lived in Manresa in Spain, which is about 45 minutes from Barcelona. So I've been lucky to live in some pretty cool areas. Um, some of the cities have been small, but they've been really close to these really big, you know, amazing cities. Paris is probably my favorite, favorite city in Europe, though, if I had to pick one. Food, fashion, entertainment, everything. Architecture, art, yeah, it's amazing. Great basketball in France. Yeah, too. really good basketball. So now, you know, we talked about yesterday, obviously you want to still continue to play and have a long, fruitful career. Now, what's the next step? Do you want to stay in, in, in the top league in Portugal? Would you like to move, go back to somewhere else? What's your next step, you think? Um, well, there's been some budget cuts throughout the league in Portugal and everything because of COVID. Um, and most teams don't have really big budgets anyway. So, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to stay in Portugal. Um, agents working on some things, maybe try to get back to the Adriatic League. Um, you know, he had a you know really good career there, Alvin Snow. Um, I played there my first year, so I played in the Adriatic League myself. Um, so right now, just working on getting in shape, you know, after this COVID crap, <laughs> sitting at home in quarantine for a while and only being able to do push-ups and sit-ups and stuff like that was, you know, it was tough. So been in the gym a lot lately, getting myself back into shape, getting ready for whatever comes my way. Now, is there a specific country you'd like to go to or go back to? What's that? What's that? Is there a specific country that you would like to go to in the Adriatic League or, or a country you'd like to go back to and play in? Man, I'm really just open. You know what I mean? I just want to keep hooping, play quality basketball in a good league for, for a professional club. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to deal with nonsense or anything like that. Yeah, so oh, speaking along these lines, you know, what has been like the biggest problems for you playing basketball in Europe? Uh, I think the biggest problem for, for almost everybody is that we have to deal with sometimes, and like I said, not trying to speak bad on any clubs or anything like that, but sometimes the clubs aren't the most professional. You know, your payments can be late, things can't be handled the best. Um, but, you know, that kind of is based on how the economy is going too, you know. Uh, so as professionals, we just got to be patient with that, um, and sometimes that's difficult to deal with. You know, you got bills at home, stuff you got to take care of, blah, 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 blah. Everyone has their own circumstances, you know. So that's probably the most frustrating or difficult thing. Now, what advice would you give other players that are about to go from either college or, you know, playing at a high level in the States to now coming overseas? Man, just like we said, like I told you yesterday, man, just be a pro early. You know what I mean? Be patient with that stuff early. I understand coming over here, you're you're going to see that you're going to be getting so much money every month, and that first paycheck is supposed to come. You're going to be anxious for that, right? It might be late. You got to be patient with that stuff. Um, 
you know, have a good agent. Make sure your agent knows what he's doing. Make sure your contracts are solid. You know, everything's crystal clear. There's no room for any error and everything. Protect yourself with stuff like that. But be a pro early. Work out. Get yourself in the weight room early. Because that'll, that'll, you know, lengthen your career and just make you a better player in general. Yeah, definitely. Now, what, you know, when you do finally decide to put the ball down as a player, what's the next step for you? Do you want to stay in the game? Would you like to step out and do other things? Um, you know, I have some other ventures that I'm, you know, been discussing with people and talking to people about. I'm really into food. I like to cook a lot. Really into cars. Um, so I've just got a couple of different ideas, you know, turning in my head and everything like that. I thought about getting into coaching, but, you know, coaching is really time consuming, you know, maybe even more than playing. So uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when the ball stops bouncing. Hopefully I'll have something in the works by then and can transition easily, but still got a few more years of doing this, I hope. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, what? whatever you, I think you decide to do after basketball, you'll be successful at it because – the work ethic, you know, translates from mm -hmm. what you're doing in the game to anything off the floor as well. You know, your life habits are always going to translate if you right. stay consistent right. with that. Right. What, what type of things along that line would you say for young players, not even ones that have played college basketball, but before that, you know, some young kids, teenagers, as far as even getting to where you've gotten as a high school player, as a college player, as a professional player, what, what do you think the most important things are to focus on at that age? Oh, man, just getting in the gym, you know, getting as much reps up as possible. Um, st start start strength training early, you know what I mean? That'll make you more athletic, more explosive, everything. Keep, make you less prone to injuries. Um, but, you know, getting in the gym, getting your reps up, having people around you, you know, make sure your circle's right. You know what I mean? Don't listen to, don't just listen to anybody and don't be listening to everybody, you know? Make sure you got a good circle and focus on your game. You know what I mean? Stay in the weight yeah, room. Block out those distractions. Yeah, block out distractions. Eat right. You know. Live consistently with good habits. Yeah. Right. Um, no, no, you got a great message. And I think if you decide to go into coaching, you will be able to help young players, pro players, college players so much with just the experiences you went through um, and, and the, the levels that you've reached. Yeah. Um, you know, so is there any anything you want to plug right now, like a, a business you're working on, social media, website, anything like that? Uh, nothing that I'm really wanting to put out there yet, you know what I mean? So just got things kind of working in the dark right now with a, with a few people back home and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. I'll put a link up, you know, on the screen if, if people want to follow you and, and, and see what you're up to and where you're headed next for your for your Instagram. Um, definitely go follow yeah. this guy. He's obviously he's been playing all over the world, They're living a very interesting life. That's for sure. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I really, really appreciate your time. I know the viewers do as well and, and what you've been able to share from your experiences, from your knowledge. And I appreciate you're willing to do this a second time and hopefully man, this one no, good, know, be, the, be the right time. Yeah, it's all good. It's all love, bro. All right. Thank you so much, man. Take care. Safe travels back to the States, and good luck with whatever you end up doing next season. Appreciate it, homie. Hope to catch up. All right. Sounds great. All right, later, bro.